Chickpea's second birthday today. Happy birthday, or hatch day, Chickpea. So he's two years old now. What are you looking at, spider? He's two years old now. He, um, he's got a very interesting story to him in that his mother is still around somewhere. Is that? No, it's not her. Uh, his mother was one of three sisters. The two sisters. So one of those sisters is still around. Right. But two, two other sisters um, were broody. One pretty much on top of the other in some long grass. And I came by. Hey Tabs. I was out mowing one day and managed to traumatically run over them, not knowing that they were in the grass there. One of the sisters was traumatically hurt. You know, it's a lawnmower. I was absolutely traumatized. I'd completely lost the plot. Um, I attempted to put uh, this particular chook out of its misery. You know, I've never killed a chook before. I thought you could just break their necks, but I botched that. <laughs> I'd, I'd attempted that right when my son had just come home from school. He saw me try to kill the chicken, so he was horrified. <laughs> I ended up crashed out in the bath, sobbing. But, oh, hey, Cooper. Yeah. This is our lab. Cooper do bar. So the, the sister that was with the broody chook that got hit by the lawnmower, when the injured chook ran away, hobbling on one leg because its other leg was half hanging off, its side had been torn open, its wing had been cut off, it was really quite a horrific situation. Her sister came shepherding her, running across the yard, trying to shepherd her and protect her. The other chook which is Chickpea's mother. She come running out from her broody position under the house. And they both came and they were both try, trying to protect this, this poor injured chook who eventually just put in a box in a dark place and just let her die as peacefully as possible. We cremated her. Had a nice ceremony and, and, a, and a nice cremation. And it was after that that Chickpea's mother became fertile with this, with Chickpea and what I think was his brother. Now his, his brother, I assume it's his brother, they looked almost identical. But in an earlier video you can see his brother when they were young. <coughs> he disappeared only after a few months. We haven't never seen him since, so I'm guessing he got attacked or something. So I've had chickpea left. Now, theorising on this, I, I'd been talking to a geneticist who specialises in hybridisation. Um, and he'd written a book, a field guide, to all the records of hybrids in history. Now, there, he has only three records of fowl cross peacock in entire recorded history so and the, the last record he had was in 1923 now, the earliest record was something like in the 1500s which is really quite extraordinary to, to bring records from agricultural shows from that age so chickpea is totally unique extraordinary. And this particular geneticist who, who specializes in hybrids, he, he has his uh, beliefs or his study, has, he has a, a 
theory of evolution based on hybridization rather than genetic mutation. And when you look at chickpea, you know, if in 50,000 years or so, a paleontologist were to dig up chickpea's remains, you know, what would they classify him as? What kind of, what, what species would he be? Right? There, there's no real obvious lineage there as far as morphology. You, know, you, you wouldn't pick him as a, as a peacock. You wouldn't pick him as a normal chicken. So where would he fit on that taxonomy? So I'm thinking all of this and also how hybridization works, you know, why, why don't we see more of it? Why did chickpea happen to come to us or be born in our yard after this traumatic event? So my theory there is that the trauma itself of the mother seeing her sister uh, get so tragically injured that that created a panic changing the very uh, biochemical layers uh, within her reproductive system around the ova um, that would normally block uh, inappropriate species from mating with her and, and making her eggs fertile. But if she was so desperate to reproduce, if that stress of seeing her sister being killed in such a horrible way, if that was enough stress to reproduce urgently, then maybe those, those stress chemicals had affected her, um, her reproductive chemistry in such ways. Now I'm basing that on the, on the concept of epigenetics where similar things can happen, where we can have toxins and stresses affect the epigenetic layers or the, the biochemical sheath along our DNA, which is inherited. Um, but in the epigenetic layer, the, biochemic, uh, the biochemistry is what switches on and off the gene expressions as we grow in order to trigger different growth periods, in order to trigger different protein uh, responses and different timings and stuff like that. So we know that the body can change its chemistry um, and changes chemistry to respond in different uh, in different situations, different stresses, different environments and opens up an entire path of evolution. Uh, which is not widely accepted or studied. And most evolutionists would still believe in a random selection. But here we have the concept of an experiential adaptation, which can be inherited by offspring. So, happy birthday, Chickpea. I'm glad you're still with us even two years later. And I wish you many more years to come. Oh, that's sweet, sleepy chickpea. <laughs> Bye.